Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. Welcome to Bishop Stortford Methodist Church on the web. Wherever you're joining us from, you are most welcome. We come to worship our loving God. And we give thanks and praise that we're able, through the wonders of technology, to be able to do that. We are hoping and praying that if everything goes ahead as planned, then we will be open for live worship in the building on the 23rd of May. That's Pentecost, the 23rd of May. And the day after, we have the builders in for our redevelopment project, All Being Well. And there'll be a newsletter coming out to update everyone. But you can read more about it on our webpage, Bishop Stortford Methodist Church Redevelopment. But let us sing at home. Number 83, praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. So let us pray together. Faithful God, we offer you our praise and thanksgiving for your constant presence with us during these recent difficult days and months. We thank you for all the ways in which we have seen your love in action 
through your people across the world and in our own communities too. Though there have been feelings of loss, grief, confusion, loneliness and sadness, we've also been encouraged by the signs of life and hope around us and by the knowledge of your hand guiding and sustaining us. So we give you thanks for all the ways in which your church globally has come to the aid of those who struggle and suffer the most, demonstrating the love of Jesus in practical ways. As we continue to seek our strength and refuge in you, help us to rest in the knowledge and shelter of your unending love. Amen. Stuart and Brenda are going to read the psalm for us, Psalm 46. The responses will be on the screen for you to join in at home. And then Sue will be reading our New Testament reading from 2 Corinthians. Thank you. The psalm is number 46, which in Singing the Faith is 810. God is our refuge and strength, a, a very, very present, present help in, in trouble. trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and, and though, though the, the mountains, mountains tremble in the, in the heart, heart of the sea, sea, though the waters rage and swell, and, and though, though the, the mountains, mountains quake at the towering seas, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the, the holy, holy place of, of the dwelling of the, of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be moved. God, God shall help her at, at the, the break, break of day. The nations are in uproar and the kingdoms are shaken, but, but God, God enters his voice, and, and the, the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The, the God, God of Jacob, Jacob is our stronghold. Come and behold the works of the Lord. What, what destruction, destruction he has wrought upon, upon the earth. He makes wars to cease in all the world. He, he shatters, shatters the bow and, and snaps the spear. spear and, and burns, burns the chariots in, in the, the fire. fire. Be still and know that I am God. I, I will, will be exalted, exalted among, among the nations. nations. I, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The, the God, God of, of Jacob, Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 8 to 15. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little 
did not have too little. Amen. We've taken this Sunday as the Easter Offering Sunday. Normally, in normal times, how many times do we say that at the moment, we would have had a circuit service for the offerings taken at Easter, which go towards the World Mission Fund. And the Methodist women in Britain always put together a service that can be used by churches. So we're using the Methodist Women in Britain Easter Offering online service today. And I'm very pleased that two of our circuit members who are very active in Methodist Women in Britain, that is Brenda and Sue, are giving us two of the to, uh, two of the stories for this Sunday. First of all, Brenda will tell us a little bit about the work in Brazil, and then Sue will talk about the work in South India. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Sue. A story from Brazil. Brazil has, the, very sadly, the highest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases and the highest number of deaths in Latin America. While there has been no coordination for a nationwide lockdown or self-distancing measures, some federal states have implemented their own lockdowns in an attempt to stop the spread of the virus. The lockdown in the Amazon region is gradually being lifted, but the region has had some of the highest numbers of cases and deaths, and neither the hospitals nor the morgues in the city of Manaus have been able to cope with such large numbers of victims. Manaus is located within the missionary Methodist Missionary District in the Amazon region known as Rima. This new district is part of the Methodist Church in Brazil's expansion strategy. As they plant churches in areas that do not yet have Methodist presence. The work of Rima missionaries in these communities has been severely affected by the closures of local Methodist churches across the nation. The Methodist Church in Britain is coming alongside our partners in Rima by supporting discipleship development, family support, and children and young people's work through an emergency grant from the World Mission Fund in these new church plans. This grant will help strengthen the great work that God has begun in these communities, as well as support the missionaries who are responsible for developing the work. Story two, South India. When the lockdown was announced, many labourers were caught in their workplaces usually towns and cities far away from home. With no work and no pay to send home or to support themselves, they and their families at home were left to starvation and only a few found any place to turn for help. As millions of migrants tried to return home, frightened due to the news of life-threatening pandemic, the state machinery treated them like criminals and often did not allow them to return home using the highways. When they finally arrived home, tired, despairing and famished, what they found was often serious and abject poverty. Those who have not returned to their villages 
are also facing hunger and homelessness. As they continue to face starvation, many are looking to the church in the locality for help. A grant from the World Mission Fund has enabled the Church of South India to bring relief and support to some of those hardest hit by the pandemic. They have set up community kitchens to distribute food and essentials and youth groups have prepared hand sanitizers and masks and spread awareness on public safety. The church continues to support vulnerable people whose livelihoods have been greatly impacted by the coronavirus, helping them with emergency food packets. Of course, we all now know that the situation in India has worsened considerably. What Sue read is now out of date, but the need is even greater for the World Mission Fund. And all we can do is give and pray and give and pray some more. We sing at home the hymn number 693, Beauty for Brokenness. And then Brenda will give our final story from Sierra Leone. Thank you.
from Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone recorded its first case of COVID-19 on the 31st of March, 2020. Despite initiatives by the government in a bid to prevent and control the disease, the outbreak has affected all segments of the population. And this is particularly detrimental to members of those social groups in the most vulnerable situations. The majority of their church communities, including the ministers and their family members, are also being seriously affected by the economic impact of the disease. A grant from the World Mission Fund has su supported the Methodist Church of Sierra Leone in providing food packages and distributing hygiene kits, including buckets, bowls, face masks and soap to more than 160 Methodist family heads including church ministers across the connection. This will help support those unable to provide themselves during the pandemic lockdown and alleviate hunger and hardship. So let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts and the feelings we all now experience be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. I said some of the words of Psalm 46 a number of times, at least twice this week. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble because they are the set part of the sentences that ministers say at funerals. And I must admit, there's a little bit of me that as I walk in front of someone's coffin and say those words, I wonder whether they are helpful or not to the family sitting in the church or the crematorium. Or maybe they are words that you come back to later after the rawness of grief has subsided a little. This pandemic has been tough, we all know that. It's been really hard for those who have lost loved ones and those who cannot be with their loved ones at the end. I listened on Woman's Hour to a palliative care nurse talking about her role and how it had changed during the pandemic and how her time of listening and preparing people for their final journey had altered out of all imagination. And I wonder, how has this last year affected you emotionally, spiritually, perhaps even financially? Do the words of Psalm 46 encourage you or do they ring hollow at the moment? Only you can answer that. I wonder, as questions framed from the Easter offering service, what has helped you during this time? And whether there are any go-to passages of the Bible that you turn to in times like this. I must admit, my go-to we had last week, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. 
It's my go-to, I suppose, because it's one of the psalms I know off by heart. But also because it doesn't say that nothing bad will happen, but rather when I walk through the deepest, darkest valley, God will be with me. And the psalmists pour out their souls to God, sometimes quite angrily. There's upset. All human life is in the Psalms. But usually at the end of the psalm, the psalmist turns again to God. And in Psalm 46 we read, Be still and know that I am God. And sometimes that is all we can do, all we can hold on to is being still and being in the presence of God. Our New Testament reading, 2 Corinthians, encourages us, or Paul was encouraging the church in Corinth to give, to be generous, and to support their brothers and sisters. Verse 8 says, I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love. Generosity, love, all bound up with compassion. I want to go back to some words that uh, Reverend Jan Bischkoff said last week about the essence of love and the two words that he chose about Jesus' love, compassion and solidarity. Now I think it's a shame that sometimes in, in some of our older translations, compassion is translated, uh, the word, Greek word for compassion is translated as pity. Because pity has all sorts of negative connotations. When I was at college, we were um, taught to think about the difference between pity, sympathy, and empathy. And empathy is putting yourself in other people's shoes. There's a native Indian saying, apparently, that you should not judge another until you have walked a mile in their moccasins. Empathy is entering into another person's story, showing solidarity with them. And that's why these stories from around the world for the Easter offering service are so important. They tell the stories of ordinary people just like you and me. People we can, I hope, empathise with. Yes, it has been tough here for so many people in so many ways. But when we see the images on our TV screens from India, from Brazil, from other places that haven't had the vaccine rollout, where there has been such dreadful suffering, then hopefully we can, in some small way, empathise with people around the world. Our concern and our love for others should mirror Jesus' compassion and solidarity with the poor. Paul writes, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes and our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty 
you might become rich. Jesus was not afraid to empathize and put himself in the place of those who are outcasts. We are called as Christians to love our brothers and sisters. And the essence of love is compassion and solidarity. It's listening to others' stories and being moved by them and being moved into action. We need, as Christians, to put our words into action. Faith without action is dead. We need to find ways to live out in practical ways, even if it's not financially, the way in which we can hear our brothers and sisters around the world and not think of them as other or out there, but rather as our neighbours, as our sisters and brothers in Christ. So I ask you to prayerfully consider giving to the World Mission Fund via Methodist Women in Britain. At the end of this service, there will be details of how you can do that online. And in our newsletter and in our, my pastoral letter, if you are, prefer to send a cheque, then that can be done too. There are ways and means. But we, above all, need to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters and let that prayer move us into action. That we don't pity, in the old usage of the word, and just say, ah, that's a shame. But we have compassion we have empathy, and we put that into solidarity in action, just as our Lord Jesus Christ did. So I commend the work of the World Mission Fund to you. And I pray that you will find comfort in the Psalms. And if Psalm 46 doesn't speak to you at the moment, have a look at some of the other ones. See which one you can make your own. Because we have a God who journeys with us, who travels with us, who loves us with an amazing love that for our sake, Jesus Christ became poor so we might become rich. Amen. So let's hold a moment of quiet before our prayers of intercession. And the response to the prayer is, Merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer. So let us pray. We pray for those affected by COVID-19 around our world. For those who struggle to feed their families, those who are unable to socially distance from others, those who are unable to access health care, and those who have suffered unimaginable loss and deprivation. We pray for the work of all we can and other agencies seeking to bring help and relief to those in greatest need. And we pray for our world church partners seeking to work locally to help their communities. And we pray especially for the situation in India at the present time. We pray that our government and others may rise to the challenge and send more aid to that stricken country. 
merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and we pray for those affected by COVID-19 in our communities. For all who work and live in Methodist homes for the aged and other care homes. For those who are struggling with financial insecurity and the threat of losing a job or a home. For those struggling with domestic abuse, difficult home environments or mental health issues. And we pray for those who provide medical and social care, for food banks and debt agencies, refugee agencies and all those working to bring help to those who are suffering. Merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer. And we pray for those known to us who are affected by COVID-19. For those who grieve the loss of a friend or relative, especially for those who have not been able to attend the funeral of a loved one. We continue to pray for Rose, Wendy and Vanessa, and all the family of Les and friends. And we pray for the friends of Dora too. And we pray for those who struggle with ill health or loneliness, and for all who feel fearful, confused or anxious. Loving God, we pray for those who stand alongside those who suffer and seek to offer support in their time of need. Merciful Lord, in your loving kindness, hear our prayer. We pray that you will show us how we can practically show the love of Jesus to those in need of support amongst our families, friends and neighbourhoods, as well as worldwide. May we know God as our refuge and strength, our very present help in time of trouble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all who have helped put this service together for Methodist Women in Britain and to Brenda and Sue who have been steadfastly helping raise funds uh, for Easter offering services over the years. And to you for your generosity in so many ways whether that is by prayer, by loving kindness to your neighbour, by your financial gifts. So loving God, bless all the gifts of your people, given in love. Bless the work of Methodist Women in Britain, the World Mission Fund and all we can. Bless their partner agencies that Relief will come to those who need it most and help us to share your love, your generosity with compassion and solidarity. Amen. We sing at home the hymn number 706, Christ Be Our Light.
Our worship has ended. Our service begins. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord and our neighbour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love, on earth and in heaven, now and always. Amen. Thank you.